Nendra Jha, the Chief Executive Officer of Tata Steel UK, joins us on the phone line and we also have our very own Kritika Saxena to take us through the interview. Kritika? Thanks for that, Reema. Uh, thanks for joining again. Uh, my first question to you is, uh, can you take us through what was the shortfall that you were incurring as a result of the old pension scheme and now that you have a revised pension scheme or a, you have begun discussions for it, can you take us through how exactly that will come down, the specific shortfall? Okay, uh, thank you, Kritika, for this question, because uh, this question is a more complicated question than <laughs> uh, one can answer very quickly. Mm. Uh, so let me, let me just tell you what exactly we are trying to do. We are trying to launch a consultation process for British Steel Pension Scheme closing to future accruals. Why is it necessary? It is to de-risk the business. It's not a specific shortfall, but what happens is that during, uh, during the valuation times, based on the valuation parameters, the actuarial valuation parameters, there can be huge gap on a given day. And that gap can disappear during the year, but it doesn't matter. It matters on the day of that valuation. And mm -hmm. that can be sometimes a huge gap. Now, you would imagine that 130,000 uh, members of the British Steel Pension Scheme are currently being supported by about only 10,000 active employees. Mm -hmm. Now, this is an imbalance that remains and would continue to become worse as some more businesses like specialty are hived off. Now, when only 8,000 employees are supporting such a huge pension scheme, any difference in valuation can cause huge stress onto a business which becomes its sponsor. Now, what we are trying to do is that a well-run pension scheme, we are trying to protect from the vagaries of the future by preventing future accruals and therefore burgeoning its deficits. That is the move. And this move is only possible by working forward together with the trustees and pension regulators and to ensure that at least half of the employees, uh, sorry, the uh, members of the British Steel Pension Scheme, mm. who would be worse off should this fall into the pension lifeboat called PPF, uh, Pension Protection Fund in UK, uh, at least they should not be worse off. That is the responsible thing to do that we are trying to attempt, and that is only subject to one de-risking factor of Tata Steel UK. Other, of course, comes from the transformation plan being successful that allows us to make investments into the future. Okay, but there is a £1 billion investment across 10 years. Can you take us through the breakup? Uh, will this be completely internal accruals? And I also believe that there is a breakup of employee contribution as well. How exactly will that work? Is there a certainty that you have gotten from the unions? Uh, so, first of all, we have, uh, with the unions, uh, shared our transformation plan, which mm. includes uh, a raft of changes and various stakeholders uh, who are supporting that. Uh, including, for example, yesterday I was with the Welsh government in the evening and they have reiterated their commitment to, the, uh, to support our innovation, R&D, training, uh, uh, energy schemes, etc. Uh, there, uh, there have been promises in the past from the UK government to try and bridge the gap between the energy cost of uh, uh, Germany versus UK, for example, and that is not just a Tata Steel issue; it is an yeah. entire industry issue, hmm. which is which is being hard lobbied on. So, it, transformation plan has many many elements, including things that the employees are doing internally to improve efficiency, to uh, to, to have lower costs, etc., hmm. and of course into differentiated products. But all this must target towards a. Uh, affordable EBITDA, which mm. we have uh, shared with everybody with the trade unions, which is around 200 million pounds of EBITDA, which okay. is necessary to service the capital expenditure, the interest uh, and changes in working capital mm. before any money is taken out from the system. So keeping all these uh, points in mind, Bimlinder, what is the immediate EBITDA that you are targeting in the, in the medium term? So say in the next uh, three, four quarters, what is the affordable EBITDA target that you can have keeping the revised pension scheme as and when it comes into effect? See, this is a transformation journey that uh, works for uh, two, three years period. Uh, and it is not a quarterly subject and more of a of making sure that every quarter as per plan whether there are uh, sufficient types of actions which are taken or not mm. uh, for example we are targeting by the end of the financial year mm. uh, 
this financial year to make sure that the British Steel Pension Scheme closes and then we move on to a new defined contribution scheme. Uh, contingent upon uh, that closure, etc., there are a set of measures that will allow us to reduce our employment costs. Uh, this uh, this is just one of them, but there are many other measures, uh, including the support that I mentioned earlier from other stakeholders. We are also talking to our suppliers, etc. Uh, the the uh, target for the medium term, and me my medium term is not in quarters. Uh, let's say next mm. couple of years is to reach a sustainable EBITDA of 200 million pounds in a all weather condition. Mm. Uh, as you know, that currently there are enough tailwinds, but now there is a clear visibility of headwinds like commodity prices. Right. So uh, despite that, you need to be able to stand on your own feet, invest uh, uh, that cash into the business that then allows you to have further benefits. And let's say in a three to five years time frame, we target around 300 million EBITDA. All this is subject to the, uh, our ability to execute the transfer successfully, which in the past few months, uh, the workers, uh, uh, the managers have shown the greater determination to actually successfully be on track. Right. Uh, hi, Mr. Ja. Thanks so much, sir, for joining in. Nigel on this side. Um, just want to understand, sir, how does it change the payout? You know, in the past, uh, towards the pension scheme, I believe, on a year-to-year -year basis per annum, it must have been roughly around 50, 60 million uh, pounds approximately. Um, now, what does that number come, up, come down to? Uh, again, it would be a slightly difficult question to answer because of the structure of the defined contribution scheme that we have made. What was uh, it, sir, in the at past? The headline level, at the headline level, yeah. uh, what has happened in this one is that we, we will not have, if people continue to contribute, let's say 6%, which they, they are currently contributing to the pension scheme. Right then it will not lead to a major reduction in the oh. company payout because we'll continue to pay around 10% uh, if they uh, pay 6%. But below 6%, uh, if they pay, then mm. there is a matching contribution. So, for example, somebody pays 3%, mm. then the company matching contribution will be 3%. It's difficult to predict who will choose to do what. Right. And people have different personal needs. Mm. They, they obviously choose differently for, uh, under these circumstances. What was this number, sir, in the past? Pardon? What was this uh, payout number in the past? Uh, in the past, how much was the payout uh, towards this pension scheme? Uh, I wouldn't be able to give you the exact figures, and I don't want to mislead you on... Uh, 60 million pounds, sir? Uh, I'm sorry, but... commitment from the unions already uh, see we the unions have had we had a very hard negotiation with the unions mm. and I must mm. tell you that there are substantial commitments given by the company mm. uh, around for example uh, two blast furnace uh, operation continuation until 2021 mm. uh, of course uh, subject to company remaining solvent mm. and uh, there is a 2021 employment pact that has been agreed uh, they, there is a very uh, uh, there is a good competitive uh, defined contribution mm. scheme that has been agreed. These are all substantial commitments Correct. Uh, compared to the industry. Right. The uh, As far as the, our investments are concerned, uh, you mm. would imagine that that is subject to the success of the transformation plan. It is an integral element of the transformation plan. And uh, if successful, we are okay. we will continue to invest. For example, this year we are investing 85 million pounds. Okay, Mr. Jha. Yeah. The fact of the matter is that when you started the year, the plan was to exit the company, at least mid-year through, the plan was to exit uh, the UK operations completely. Now the plan has changed. You are, in fact, investing £1 billion. Uh, this incidentally has also happened at a time when there has been a change in the top tech, uh, when a new chairman has come on, or rather, Ratan Tata has come back at the helm. How much of a role did Tata, Tata Sons have in uh, festering and creating that trade agreement between the unions and Tata Steel Europe? 
first of all, let me correct some records straight. Mm -hmm. One billion pound. of uh, EBITDA. So we we must recognize that there is some room to go in order to be able to afford that kind of a thing. Second thing is that these are the organizations which are run absolutely professionally by their professional boards, uh, which does not change track based, uh, based on whatever happens uh, at a more remote uh, shareholding pattern of the, uh, uh, of the holding companies. So it is uh, a responsible uh, way of dealing with the business. It is a professional way of dealing with the business through the boards that have taken the decision. And this is a decision of the Tata Steel UK board, which has uh, authorized the management to negotiate very clearly with the trade unions. All right, Mr. Jha, thanks so much, sir, for joining in and giving us uh, all those details.